Hey Wargamers, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how I airbrush yellow using a riddened dragon tower from Tor Gaming. If you're airbrushing indoors, please be sure to wear a mask. I also use a old cardboard box just to catch the overspray because I don't want it all over my desk. This is my airbrush, a Badger Sotar 2020, which I'll be using today. This is a pretty solid, durable, single action airbrush, and it's been really handy for me. I'm also going to be using a glass eyedropper for measuring out airbrush thinner and just for cleaning the airbrush out in general. Before I hit the yellow, I'm going to begin by priming the model with Vallejo Surface Primers in black and white. Black first and then white just to lighten it all up and give us some sample priming. I'm then going to build up the yellow using Vallejo Scrofulous Brown and Citadel Averland Sunset and Uriel Yellow. In the new Citadel range, Zamisi Desert is pretty close to Scrofulous Brown. Leprous Brown in the old Citadel range will match. To start, I'm just airbrushing the black primer over the entire model. With the black primer, it's important to make sure I get a full, even base coat. I don't want to leave any areas showing any bare metal. So this is probably the longest of all the airbrushing steps at this point. I'd like to note that the miniature used in this video, the Ridden Dragon Tower, was generously supplied by Tor Gaming. You can visit their website, torgaming.co.uk, to view their product line. It's important to view the model from different angles, especially from the bottom, and make sure there's not areas between the legs or under the wings that may have been missed. With the black priming done, I'm just going to blow out the remaining black from the airbrush because there wasn't a whole lot, and then start loading it up with the white primer. Because there was only a tiny bit of black primer left in my airbrush, I didn't bother really cleaning it out between the black and the white. Just add the white in and sprayed through until it starts flowing more white than black. I'm applying the white specifically to the top of the model at about a three quarter angle so that I can get a nice zenithal prime. This gives me natural shadows on the bottom, natural highlights on top. Because I'm going to base coat the entire model with the scrupulous brown next, it's not super important that I get a zenithal prime here, but if any of the brown goes on transparently, the zenithal prime will give the model a little bit of natural shading. Now that I'm done with the white primer, I'm going to be switching to the first brown shade. And because that is a darker shade, I'm gonna definitely wanna clean the airbrush out. I don't wanna accidentally lighten it. Here I take some clean tap water, just pump it into the airbrush and squirt it in and out of the eyedropper. This helps mix the paint up and gather it into the water. Then I can just dump the water out and repeat this a few times. Once I've done that and got the majority of the paint out, I'll blow through just plain water until the airbrush is running clear. When you're switching colors in the airbrush like this, it can take a little while to get the airbrush drawing completely clear. If there's a gradual progression between one color and the next, it's less important that you get it perfectly clean. But in this case, because I'm jumping from white to a darkish brown, I don't want to have any sort of bleed over between the two colors. Because the first color I'm airbrushing with isn't designed for an airbrush, it's actually a brush paint, I'm going to mix it with some Tamiya X20A airbrush thinner. However, this game color paint is pretty thin already, so I'm just going to basically mix it directly in the airbrush by just shaking it around a little bit after adding both the thinner and the paint. Even within one product range, every paint is pretty unique in how thick it is, how thick the pigment is, etc. And how well it works with your airbrush is really a lot of trial and error. So with this shade of brown, I'm basically aiming for 100% coverage of the model. I don't really want to leave any areas showing completely black, but at the same time, I am focusing more at the top than the bottom, so I get a little bit of zenithal highlighting out of it. Mostly though, I'm just working my way around the model, making sure I get a little bit of coverage everywhere so that none of the primer shows through. The exception to that, of course, is the tower with the goblin on top, because that doesn't need to be yellow.
Now I'm going to switch over to the Citadel Averland Sunset. I've already thinned this color by putting it into an eyedropper bottle and adding some Flow Aid. If I hadn't done that already, this would definitely need a little bit of airbrush thinner. With this color, I am applying it more in a zenithal pattern, where I am working from the sides of the model and from the top. I'm not looking at the bottom of the model anymore. I want to leave the undersides, the original darker brown color, and then start applying this yellow from the top down. Because this color builds so well off the brown base coat, it doesn't take really long for this step to be completed. Now I'm going to lighten it up even further by using Uriel Yellow. Again, I've pre-thinned this to put it into an eyedropper bottle, so I don't need to thin it for my airbrush, but if you're using it straight from the paint pot, you'll definitely want to thin it a little bit. Again, I'm repeating a sort of zenithal process where I'm working more from the top of the model and ignoring the sides even at this point. I'm finding this color doesn't quite go bright enough, so I'm going to also add in a few more steps where I mix this with some white. I've still got quite a bit of the Uriel Yellow in my airbrush, so I'm going to add the white directly to the airbrush's mixing cup, and then go from there. Here I'm just using a small jeweler's screwdriver to mix it up in the pot a little bit, just to make sure it's nice and consistent. And here again, I'm spraying mostly from the top down, grabbing the top edges of each of the details as I go along. I still want this lighter, so I'm going to add more white into the existing mix. At this point, I've added a fair bit of straight paint, so I'm going to add just a little bit of airbrush thinner as well. So now I'm focusing on a couple areas specifically, basically the head, the tail, and sort of the wingtips and shoulder areas. Here I'm spraying the wingtips at a very oblique angle. I want to really just catch the edges of the wing without affecting the rest of the model. And that's basically it for airbrushing the yellow. After this, I go ahead and I add a sepia wash, which is not part of this video. And that really just helps define each feather individually. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.